The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the You and Your Doctor show, Living a Longer and Healthier Life. We have a very packed program tonight. We're going to be talking about a skincare line with a plastic surgeon to start the program. And in the second half, we have a nephrologist, and we're going to talk about kidney care. So really covering um, the health care and skin care um, lines, uh, the latest and greatest in South Florida tonight. Um, but before we get started, I want to tell you a little about, about All County Healthcare. They're our sponsor. They're a Medicare certified home health care agency. If you have any questions about home health or Medicare, um, you can ask them questions at 1 717 7170. Ask for Maddie. She will be happy to answer all your questions. Or, like I do, I go to allcountyhealthcare.com or their Facebook page, All County healthcare inc you just put that in the search bar and that's where you can see videos of this show anytime as well as the website um and then you can if you ever want to look back for some information we've had a lot of orthopedic surgeons on here cardiologists neurologists plastic surgeons tonight will be our first nephrologist so we have a library of of health there for you to um check out if you ever um want to have um do a little research for you or your family on health in South Florida. So without further ado, I want to welcome Dr. Hilton Becker back to the program. He's a plastic surgeon, clinic of plastic surgery right here in Boca Raton. Dr. Becker, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for coming back to the program, and uh, we really appreciate it. And we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to flip the, uh, do a 360 from last time we had you on. We talked about the latest and greatest in plastic surgery. But you have a skincare line and it's not unique for doctors to have a skincare line, maybe in dermatology or plastic surgery, but your focus is on all natural, the best ingredients. So tell us a little bit about your skincare line, and then I have a couple questions for you as well. Well, if you look at skincare generally, uh, it's mass produced, and most of it is made with chemicals that are made to look good, feel good, and smell good. Little uh, effort is put into efficacy or studies, etc. So when I started plastic surgery, um, we were doing skin peels. And um, one of my patients who had a skin peel came in a few days later with a terrible rash on her face. And I said, uh, what happened? She said, oh, I put a moisturizer on, and after that my face just swelled. So I said, what moisturizer was it? And she told me the name. She actually had the bottle with her. I picked up the bottle and read the ingredients, and I was quite shocked because I'd never done that before. And having a background in chemistry, I recognized there were a lot of chemicals in there, and a lot of them quite toxic. So I looked into this, and I decided I need to get something better for my patients. So I started bottling very simple products, such as olive oil, and then we progressed to squalene oil, and uh, then we went on to a 100% natural exfoliant, which is glycolic acid, 
And this just grew and grew based on 100% natural ingredients. We bottled single ingredients that really had an effect on the skin. Now, if you look at skincare products, a lot of them claim to be natural, but actually they're not. Because most skincare products are either lotions or creams. And in order to make a lotion or cream, you have to dissolve oil in water. And to dissolve oil in water, you need an emulsifier. Once you've formed a cream, that's an ideal culture medium for bacteria. So you've got to add preservatives. And so the list of chemicals go on and on. So we decided to make a product chemical free that would not irritate the skin and um, would be 100% natural. Oh, that's fantastic. And you obviously put a, a lot of research in from your chemistry background as yeah. well. And, that, and that's huge as well. And I can tell you as someone who had acne at a very early age, I mean, there's definitely stuff out there that will rip apart your dermis, your skin there. Absolutely. So that's uh, definitely great to hear that. And you kind of uh, talked about on your website as an, an opposite approach. I, I like that term because that was kind of unique and that's where that kind of, um, I, I kind of noticed that right away. And that's because it's a product free from a concoction of the chemicals you were talking about with little or no scientific basis, which you just hit on as well. Or harmful, and then you're you're introducing a program without harmful uh, effects, um, and that is effective active ingredients, which are are natural. So one of those um, active ingredients is, and I'll probably get this wrong, but salicylic acid. Yeah. How, what is that, and how does that work to open the pores or pore cleanser? I yeah. guess. Well, salicylic acid is one of the hydroxy acids that we use. Salicylic acid is derived from willow bark, so it's a fairly natural substance. Um, the, the other exfoliants are lactic acid, which is the mildest one, glycolic acid, which is sort of in between, and salicylic acid is a more aggressive exfoliant. It's used for acne skin, it absorbs oil, and used to dry oily skin. Okay. Um, so acne can happen at all ages, but we normally think about it in adolescents or teenagers. Um, do you treat um, patients that young, or do you also treat adult acne as well? How does well, that work? I don't really treat acne as such. I'm not a okay. dermatologist. But, um, you know, just for normal skin care, when the patients come in with oily skin, mm -hmm. uh, we, we give them salicylic acid. Patients with acne really should be treated by a dermatologist. There are a lot of strong new medications that they use today that uh, need supervision of a dermatologist. Oh, okay. Right. But that, the salicylic acid, is something that can maybe help as a pore cleanser for adults that are already seeing you in your practice right. um, for other um, ailments or um, procedures. Right. So the salicylic acid is not put into a base or a cream or a lotion. It is the pure 100% salicylic acid. The same if we use glycolic acid. It's pure glycolic acid dissolved in water. We do not, mm. not put it into any fancy ingredient that smells good, looks good, or feels good. We want the active product. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of fillers nothing, as well. Nothing, yeah. And a lot of the, not a lot of fake um, ingredients, like you said, to make it smell or, or um, you know, be more appealing, Correct. I guess is the one. Great. So you're getting the... The honest truth, um, exactly chemicals, the healthy stuff that, that right from nature. Correct. Okay. Now, one of the other things I saw on uh, the website as well was essential lipids moisture, uh, moisturizer. And I think of lipids, is that, that's a fat, right? Lipids are the fats and the oils that the skin naturally produces. So as we age, we lose lipids on the skin. One of the main ingredients in the skin is, um, is sebum, and sebum is a mixture of lipids and squalane oil. Now, you can get squalane oil, 100% pure squalane oil, and apply that to the skin, which is an excellent moisturizer, prevents water loss from the skin. But a lot of creams are actually squalane oil taken in small quantities, mixed with water with emulsifiers and chemicals, and you really don't want that. If you're going to use a moisturizer, use pure squalane oil. 
Now, a lot of women don't like to put oil on their skin. It's not glamorous. It's not sexy. So they buy a beautiful smelling cream that has the emulsifiers and the chemicals in it. You're far better off just using very light oil, applying it to the skin and letting it um, dissolve into the skin and use, instead of using a rich cream. Now, what we've done as well, we've combined our squalane oil with hyaluronic acid, which is a substance that I've done research on, actually, to, and shown that uh, hyaluronic acid stimulates collagen formation in the skin. Now, hyaluronic acid is a very expensive active ingredient. It's added to a lot of skincare products in very small quantities, just so that they can put on the label contains hyaluronic acid. So my philosophy, once again, is if you're going to use hyaluronic acid, use 100% pure hyaluronic acid. The problem is if you dissolve hyaluronic acid, it comes as a powder. If you dissolve it in water, you've got to add preservatives once again. <laughs> so what we do is we dissolve the hyaluronic acid in the squalane oil. So now you've got two active natural ingredients. You apply it in the palm of your hand, add some water, which will now dissolve the hyaluronic acid, mixed with the squalane oil, and you have the perfect moisturizer. Does that take some people a little bit of getting used to because they're used to the thick cream and that, that they've kind of been brought up on? Absolutely, and that, <laughs> and that is the problem. Patients don't want to have to do any work. They want to put their finger in, pull out a very romantic cream and apply it to their face and think it's magic. Uh -huh. Now, this product, as I said, the powder is dissolved in oil. So before you use it, you've got to shake it up to suspend it because there are no emulsifiers in there. Once it's in the palm of your hand, you've got to add water. So you've got to do a little work to get this moisturizer. Mm -hmm. But once you get it, it is par excellence, the best moisturizer you can find. And that's when they notice that um, they've got something that they, it's worth making the change to. And is different to your standard mm -hmm. moisturizer, correct. Now, your line of uh, moisturizers here in um, the pore cleanser, is. Um, do you have to be um, a... Uh, patient of yours or no, no you can you can get it from our office and it's also available online okay you can go to my website mm -hmm. www.beckermd.com and it's all available there that's where i am right now and there's a ton of info there um now that's where i also found a little bit of information about vit vitamin c serum i had never heard about that before of course we think of taking vitamin c especially this time of the year with all these respiratory illnesses and viruses and bugs going around um and as men and women adults taking vitamin c but there's actually a, a vitamin c serum that can help the skin absolutely and very interesting vitamin c has been shown to be very effective in the skin it's an antioxidant and it stimulates collagen formation however once again vitamin c comes in a powder and if you dissolve the powder in water it will break down very rapidly. So uh, companies have used very expensive substances to try to stabilize the vitamin C. And the vitamin C lotions and creams can be very, very expensive because of these stabilizers to prevent the vitamin C breaking down. But vitamin C as a powder is very stable. So you don't have to um, um, suspend it until you apply it onto the skin. So we actually now have gone to powders, and a few other companies have now gone to powders that they sell that you can apply to your skin and add water just prior to adding the powder to your skin. You get a far higher concentration. So we have little one-ounce jars of pure vitamin C powder that you can add with your moisturizer. So you can blend it yourself and decide how much you want to put on. The same applies to sunscreens sunscreens are made out of a lot of toxic chemicals the best way to prevent sunburn is to use a sun blocker rather than a screen a sunscreen absorbs uv light a blocker prevents it getting in so what is a blocker zinc oxide it is a white powder but of course you put it on your skin you're going to be white but that is the best way to prevent sunburn so we sell zinc oxide powder that you can blend with your moisturizer and decide how much protection you want. If you want real heavy duty protection, you're going out fishing and you don't want to get burnt, you mix a white powder and put, apply it to your face. Um, if you just want everyday protection, just add a small amount of zinc oxide to your moisturizer and that will protect you from 
just walking around in the street, the scattered UV rays. Which is important uh, important <coughs> all times of the year here in Correct. South Florida because uh, a day like today <coughs> without, you know, much cloud cover, um, I've even heard uh, people getting... Um, Actually, skin cancer, driver's side, melanoma, we've talked about a few times in this program from taking the sun in the morning every um, day on the same side Correct. Um, up to, um, I've heard a lot of different stories. But um, hold that thought, Dr. Becker. We're going to take a quick break. And on the other side, I want to talk to you a little bit more about sunscreen. Um, I love the name of your sunscreen, Natural Protective Butter Sunscreen, on the You and Your Doctor show. County Healthcare Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare Inc. still does it the old fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954 717 7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 200-99096. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At All County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Where's the strawberry farm? That's fantastic. And we're back on the You and Your Doctor show. We're here with Dr. Hilton Becker. He's a plastic surgeon, clinical plastic surgery, here, right here in Boca Raton. Um, But we're talking a little bit about Becker MD Naturals line of skincare products and we're going to talk a little bit of plastic surgery right towards the end here in about um, five minutes. So if you have any questions, I have Dr. Becker here till just about 630, 1-888-565-1470. Before we broke um, with the break, I, I, want, I mentioned that I really like the name of uh, the sunscreen that you put out, the Natural Protective Butter Sunscreen. And um, I think that's um, great to you know be able to get sunscreen from a doctor <laughs> i mean rather than just going to the you know the drugstore this is something yeah. that was researched by a physician and you were mentioned telling me during the break all of your um, products um you work with your brother and he's the distributor correct so that's that's really neat and i had mentioned that when i was on your website uh beckermd.com if you click on skincare there the prices of everything that we've talked about were, I thought, pretty low coming from a doctor. And I'm not meaning because doctors charge high prices or anything. What I mean is all the education and training that you have and the research that you put into this product. So how were you able to keep the prices um, so low? Well, a lot of commercial products, the major cost goes into the packaging, the marketing, and the advertising, and the third parties involved. With me, it's direct from the manufacturer to me, very little money is put into the packaging and the marketing. Um, so most of the cost is involved in the actual ingredients, and the ingredients are the natural, super active ingredients. And that cuts down on the cost. That's oh, great. Yeah. Can uh, You only get Becker MD natural products either at your office or um, if you order them online, they're not available like at, no. uh, say, Publix or grocery stores? No. or 
Yeah. Okay. That's why. Okay. Yeah. That's really good to know. Let's talk a little bit about um, natural exfoliants because I know you um, mentioned that uh, a little bit on the website. And um, I don't really focus on uh, exfoliants, but um, I'm sure some of my listeners do. So what are they and how do they work? Well, one of the best ways to rejuvenate your skin is with exfoliants. And if you notice, everything I do with the skin care is keeping it simple. And the simplest way to exfoliate your skin is with a dry brush. Just brushing mm. your skin every day. Because what happens as we age, the rate of exfoliation, that is the, the cells move to the surface of the skin and then they shed. And as this process of shedding slows down, our skin dries, you get flaky, crusty lesions on the skin. And if you don't uh, speed that process up, your skin is going to age and look old. So the way to speed it up is to dry brush your skin for a start. Now we have exfoliants which loosen the dead cells that are attached to the skin. And these are alpha hydroxy acids. Um, they naturally source this lactic acid which comes from milk. There's glycolic acid which comes from sugar cane. So these, these uh, acids, um, once again, they're 100% natural. We apply them to a gauze sponge after dry brushing apply to a, dry, a gauze sponge and just rub it on your skin. You don't need soap, you don't need cleansers. Just clean your face with the uh, acid and then wash it off. Then your skin is ready for moisturization. And anything you apply to your skin after dry brushing and exfoliating is going to penetrate the skin easier. So your moisturizer with your vitamin C and the other active ingredients that we have in our moisturizer will penetrate the skin better. And you mentioned it before, if you take the time to do these steps, you're going to get a far better outcome than maybe what you're wor um, used to in the commercial world. Absolutely. And I like that um, also on your website. There's a ton of information, but I keep on saying the website because, uh, you know, I'm really um, fascinated with how much information's on there. But you have a, a Dr. Becker's basic skincare regimen on there, and it is very thorough. It's something that people can um, print out and uh, learn a bit, little bit more about everything we talked about today. So um, definitely check that out, BeckerMD.com. Dr. Becker, where is your office in uh, Boca Raton? Uh, I'm right here on Glades Road, across the road to FAU, next to Boca Regional Hospital. Okay, wow, that is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. That is a great area, too, as well. I actually went to FAU, so yeah. uh, go Owls. Really neat there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the phone number I have here, um, well, I'll let you give it out. 561-394-6656. Uh, okay. And um, it's beckermd.com backslash skincare for the skincare service line. Now, um, your education and training is in um, plastic surgery. Correct. Um, so what is the uh, latest and greatest in plastic surgery um, that you're offering here in Boca Raton? Well, there's several interesting things that we're doing. Um, I'm actually on the faculty at FAU as well, the medical school. Great medical school yes. that they've built there in the last excellent, excellent. Well, yes. 10 years. We have, we have residents and students working with us. So I'm actually doing some research on stem cells that are derived from fat. And we can harvest fat from one part of the body and inject it into another part of the body. We use it to uh, help with our breast reconstructions after breast cancer and also to rejuvenate the face, to fill in the face. Uh, with a lot of women, instead of doing a facelift, we can rejuvenate the face by adding more fat, uh, taking out the sunken look on the face, filling in hollows, for example, under the eyes, the temples, and the cheeks. So uh, the fat injection is a very exciting area. Um, the other thing that we are doing uh, in terms of breast lifting, we have techniques now where we can do a breast lift with virtually no visible scarring. The scar is placed around the areola where it's hidden, and we use an internal mesh support to hold the breast up. This all stems from breast reconstruction work, which I'm involved with, and today a woman can have a mastectomy with an immediate reconstruction where the scar is not visible, the scar is placed in the fold of the breast, and she can look like she's never had a mastectomy or a reconstruction. She can look virtually normal. So that's another very exciting area. Um, I, uh, being involved in that area, 
uh, also doing a lot of um, breast implant problems. Patients that have had breast implants many years ago, now don't want them anymore. The implants may be ruptured. They may have scar tissue around the implants. Uh, we, we take them out and we reshape the breasts so that they don't have a sagging breast after taking an implant out. We can restructure the breast and get it looking far more normal. Um, also, in the past, implants were placed underneath the muscle. And many surgeons still place the implants under the muscle. But what happens when you have an implant under the muscle, you get a deformity known as animation deformity. When you contract the muscle, the breast implant distorts out to the side. So we're doing a lot of patients that have had this in the past. We take the implants out from under the muscle, put it above the muscle, and they now look far more normal. So between the muscle and the skin then? Correct. But wow. it's not actually under the skin. It's under what's called the fascia. Okay. Which is the lining of the muscle. In the past, they would put it under the skin, uh -huh. but that didn't have enough support for the implant. So raising the muscle, the lining of the muscle, the fascia, that membrane holds the implant in position so it doesn't sag as much as it used to. Wow, that's fascinating how it's, it's changed so much. And your experience is a, a test to that. Obviously, you've been in the field uh, a long time, and you're able to um, take the, the best... Um, what's best for the patient and offer it to your patients. Um, you kind of mentioned there um, a little bit before, I know we just have a, a couple more minutes, um, and one of the questions I had, starting with the fat used as a filler, and this is for, um, I imagine, women who are a little bit older, who over time the, the face be, begins to um, kind of, you said sunken because of age? Mm -hmm. Is that why? Correct. Now, is this fat taken from the um, midsection? And if so, is it substantially enough to make a difference in the look or no? I have to well, ask that. Well, no, <laughs> the, the fat can be taken from anywhere. Okay. It depends how much we're going to inject. If we're going to use it to reconstruct a breast, we can take a lot so that it really looks like the patient's had liposuction. But if the patient wants a filler, Mm -hmm. Instead of using a synthetic filler, we can actually take the fat, we can concentrate it, we can actually extract collagen from the fat, and we can inject like one cc at a time into the nasolabial folds, we can inject the lips, fill the lips, or we can do the whole face where we can plump up the whole face, so there we could take like the whole of the lower abdomen and utilize that fat. And that's fat from their body rather than a synthetic. Correct. Great. Really, that's yeah. really neat. Um, another question I had um, mentioned about the um, for women who had um, mastectomy, and then there's sometimes the option for an immediate reconstruction, meaning the general surgeon walks out and you walk in, or you're already right there. Right, exactly. As wow. soon as the surgeon's done with the mastectomy, I'm there doing the reconstruction right away. It only takes another 35, 40 minutes to do the reconstruction. Uh, the patient leaves hospital with a virtually normal looking breast. That is amazing. Because the surgeons today are no longer doing the old fashioned mastectomies. They are saving all the skin, including the nipple. Uh -huh. So when the surgeon's done, he's basically removed the breast gland, leaving the skin behind. We then reconstruct with an implant, mm -hmm. the various types of implants we use. I like to use the adjustable implant where we can change the size after surgery and get the woman looking as good, if not better, than before the mastectomy. Yeah, and that does a lot with um, their um, outcome-wise um, for um, attitude and recovery. Absolutely, and also their immune system. In the past, when a woman had a breast removed and she was left as what was called a mastectomy cripple, uh, th they would get recurrences. The immune system would be shattered. Today, a woman's self-esteem is totally restored, Breast cancer picture is totally different to when I first started plastic surgery. Wow, that is fascinating. Well, Dr. Becker, I want to thank you so much for coming on the program, talking about Becker MD Naturals, um, your skincare line. Um, I definitely learned a lot, and everyone should definitely uh, take another look at allcountyhealthcare.com at this video if uh, you missed anything tonight or the Facebook page as well. And um, I'm always fascinated with um, all the different type of procedures you do as well. Um, you can find more info there at BeckerMD.com. And like Dr. Becker said, he's right here in Boca Raton 
actually right across from FAU, right around the corner from actually this radio studio, hmm. 670 Glades Road, Suite 220. 220. Boca Raton, 561-394-6656. Well, Dr. Becker, you're always welcome on the program. Please um, come back on in the future. Oh, well, thank you. Let us know when you want to share any uh, other information. We'll be glad to have you on the You and Your Doctor show. County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way, where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 200-99096. Hi, my name is Deanna Barron. I'm an RN with All County Health Care. I used to work for this huge corporate-owned home health agency, and I was always worried that they wouldn't let me make enough nursing visits to be sure that your wound was fully healed or that you were completely comfortable checking your husband's blood sugar level and giving him the correct dose of insulin or that your mom's lingering cough was the end of her bronchitis, not the beginning of a new episode. The owner of All County Healthcare always says, give the patient what they need, and he means it. At All County Healthcare, I see my patients until their goals are met, and I never worry. I hope you never need a nurse to come to your home, but if you do, tell your doctor, I want All County Healthcare. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470 and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the second half of the program. We're going to be talking nephrology. I've actually never had a nephrologist on the program. I've actually only met one in my uh, four and a half years of uh, uh, health care, so I'm really excited to bring the latest in uh, kidney care and, and um, everything else that um, involves nephrology. So we're going to learn a lot about it. Um, we're here with Dr. Allie Nayer, Miami Renal Institute, made the drive up from Miami to here to Boca Raton. Dr. Nayer, welcome to the program, and thanks for making the drive. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today. I really appreciate it. And like I said, you're the first nephrologist I had in the program two years of doing this, so I really wanted to have a nephrologist on. And um, diabetes has been a huge uh, topic on this program. We have a lot of cardiologists on the program, a lot of internists right. as well. Can diabetes um, affect the, the kidney, and if so, how does it affect the kidneys? Well, this is a very good question, especially because diabetes, as you said, has become so prevalent in the U.S. Um, there are millions of people who have diabetes, and uh, sooner or late, a proportion of those patients will end up with uh, what we call microvascular complications of diabetes. These are the small blood vessel disease as a consequence of diabetes that affects both type 1 and type 2 diabetics. And these are nerve damage, eye disease, retina problems, as well as the kidney problems. And it has all to do with the blood vessels in the kidneys because kidneys, as you know, filter the blood and there are tremendous number of small blood vessels in the kidneys. So when the blood sugar is high as a consequence of diabetes, high blood sugar changes the physiology of small blood vessels and causes damage second by second, day by day, so that after 10, 15 years, the kidneys start failing. Uh, mm. But uh, the situation with diabetes is a little complicated because 
A lot of people have diabetes, but only a subset of patients with uh, diabetes develop kidney problems. So there are um, genetic factors that then dictate which diabetic is going to uh, end up with kidney failure. Uh, so a family history is very important. If uh, the father or mother uh, had diabetes and ended up on dialysis, uh, this is usually a poor prognostic indicators. So uh, for diabetic kidney disease, to make a long story short, both the environmental factors, the diet, exercise, uh, as well as the genetic factors are important. We hear that a lot in this program, uh, genetic factors, more so every single day in family history. So that is so important. But as you mentioned as well, um, staying healthy, um, not being overweight, um, can also help as well. Now, I know high blood pressure is uh, associated a lot of times, unfortunately, with diabetes as well. How does high blood pressure affect the kidneys? That's a very good question. You see, the blood vessels are like little tubes, and um, if the pressure inside these tubes is high, obviously there's going to be a lot of shear stress on the wall of this tube. And uh, the blood vessels... Um, uh, in contrast to a solid uh, tube, uh, there are live cells um, uh, made up of live cells. And once you have uh, over a prolonged period of time, increased pressure on top of these cells that do a lot of different things in maintaining the blood flow and so on and so forth, then they, they become damaged, injured, and as a consequence, um, there would be a narrowing of the blood vessels and, uh, and problems with the blood flow through those blood vessels. And this is, for example, what we see in a patient who uh, develops stroke as a consequence of narrowing of a blood vessel in the brain. And the narrowing is sometimes the result of uh, long-standing high blood pressure, which uh, people may or may not know about it. Because as you know, high blood pressure is a silent killer. So is the kidney disease. Uh, a lot of people don't notice anything until, unfortunately, it's very late uh, in the process of uh, of, uh, of the disease. Yeah, when everything is uh, working, uh, you know, perfectly in the system, and right. you're not going to really notice anything. But when they start throwing in diabetes and high blood pressure, it's almost like the the body, unfortunately, is is kind of attacking itself in a way. That's very true. Well, yes. and systems are starting to shut down. Unfortunately, you obviously can't live th uh, without your kidneys, and the blood needs to uh, pump through there. Now, does nutrition play a role in kidney care? If I'm a very healthy eater, is that going to help or not? Absolutely. You know, I'm not saying that I am. We see me on, the, but I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it look like the, you are though. <laughs> uh, the uh, nutrition is just has a profound impact on overall health. Okay. As well as on uh, individual organ health, cardiac health, yep. kidney health, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so a diet that is uh, loaded with salt, for example, is not good for kidney function, is not good for blood pressure, because salt intake, high salt intake increases blood pressure. And if the blood pressure is high, we have high blood pressure or hypertension, mm -hmm. that then causes damage to the organs, to the heart, to the kidneys, to the brain, and so on and so forth. A diet that is loaded with uh, saturated fats and trans fats are not very healthy um, because, again, um, the cells take up this fat and uh, they have difficulty metabolizing these types of fats. And as byproduct of metabolism of these kind of fats, you have toxic substances that accumulate inside the cells and cause cell toxicity. Uh, so those types of uh, lipids, fats are not very healthy. Uh, and um, so these are very important factors in kidney health, cardiac health. A, a diet that has a, a good type of fats, and these are Mediterranean fats, for, such as uh, olive oil, for example, uh, fats that have a lot of uh, uh, unsaturated fatty acids, uh, fat that is coming from uh, grains, for example, from walnut or almonds and so on and so forth, they're supposed to be healthy fat and uh, also anti-inflammatory fats. They have anti-inflammatory properties and we know how important 
inflammation is in the in the pathogenesis of diseases, uh, how the diseases come about. Not only the modern diseases such as cardiovascular disease, but accumulating evidence shows that inflammation plays a role in the process of uh, carcinogenesis. When people develop t different types of cancers, inflammation is part of that prof process, and inflammation appears to promote cancer cell growth. And the uh, dominant example is breast cancer, and so on and so forth in women. Uh, so diet is very important, and um, physical activity is super important. Uh, there was an investigator from Europe that gave a talk at the University of Miami, where I used to be a faculty, about the muscle activity and muscle cons contraction that results in release of over 1,000 mediators from the muscle cells that would promote health. These mediators are going to improve insulin sensitivity and reduce diabetes risk. And these are obviously a lot of endorphins that is gonna, uh, are going to make us feel better after exercise, but a whole slew of positive metabolic effect in the body. Uh, so that's another thing, exercise. Even if it's mild exercise, it's for sure better than no exercise. Uh, obviously, the ideal thing is if for somebody who has the physical ability to do that, to do 40 mm -hmm. minutes exercise three times a week. Uh, that uh, Even that small amount of exercise, relatively speaking, has profound effect on our health. That's that's great to hear. And we're here with Dr. Ali Nayer from the Miami Renal Institute. Um, 2040 Northeast 163rd Street, Suite 204 North Miami Beach. Great website, drnayer.com. Just going to put in the browser, www.drnayer.com. The phone number is 305-615-1514. And we're learning a lot about nephrology uh, tonight. And also, um, obviously, that encompasses the kidney, kidney care as well. Um, now, I was going to ask you about um, dialysis. I kind of jumped around because okay, I went on your website fine. and took everything. But let me ask you first, yes. what is the size of an adult kidney? Because I think to understand uh, this for the, the general person who doesn't yeah. have the education right, and training, right, right. what is, um, you've seen one, what, uh, what's Absolutely. the size of it? Or it's two? just the size of a <laughs> fist, actually. Really? If you make a fist, so your fist would be roughly the size of a kidney. Okay. And uh, now, if you're a smaller size person, would the it be smaller? Would be smaller. Obviously, the fist would person. be smaller too. If you are bigger yeah. and you have larger fists, so these the are kidney. the sides of my kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that's true. Right, and wow. uh, uh, with the, the size of the kidneys, obviously, has to do with how tall we are and uh -huh. what's our body mass and uh, whether uh, um, whether what we eat and whether. Uh -huh. We uh, are overweight, uh, so there are a number of factors. But as, as a rough estimate, the size of a fist would be mm -hmm. uh, the size of the kidney. Now, it can become, obviously, if you're bigger, it can become inflamed. But also, if there's a problem with it, 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 uh, it gets smaller and shriveled up. Have point, I David. heard you, that? Absolutely. For example, you know, for, with certain conditions, for example, I think a good example would be if somebody would donate a kidney because there's always concern what happens mm -hmm. to me if I donate a kidney. Uh, kidneys have a remarkable ability to adapt to the new condition, meaning that uh, if one kidney is removed, the other kidney is going to work harder and is going to grow to compensate for the lost kidney. Um, in each a kidney, we have roughly one million tiny filters. And uh, once a kidney is gone, the other kidney, the filters become stronger, larger, and they would filter more blood, clean more blood so that overall kidney function as a whole remains more or less the same. Uh, so kidneys have a lot of stem cells that allow the kidneys to adapt to the new environment, physiological or abnormal environments. On the other hand, if you have a disease that um, kills the little filters, such as high blood pressure for many, many years, destroys the tiny filters, uh, there is a process of scarring going on inside the kidney. And as you know, scars contract. Whenever you have a cut, you see that some years later, that area is contracted. The same process right. happens in the kidneys. Once there are scars, little by little over many years, the kidneys tend to contract and become smaller. 
And when I have a patient that I see in consultation for the first time, and I don't know how long he or she had kidney disease, uh, one uh, clue would be doing the kidney ultrasound to measure the length of the kidney. And if the kidney is already shrunken and small, it would give me uh, very valuable information that the kidney disease has been going on probably for many years uh, that resulted in a shrunken, scarred kidneys. And once there is a scar, scar doesn't go away easily. Uh, mm -hmm. The same way with the kidneys. Once you develop these scars in the kidney, they stay there and they never go away. Uh, so that's uh, the importance of prevention. If you're mm -hmm. diagnosed with diabetes, you've got to take good care of yourself. If you're diagnosed with high blood pressure, you've got to take good care of yourself because you don't want to get into the situation where you end up with a scarred kidney. I see. Dr. Nair, hold that thought. We're going to take our last break. And on the other side, I'm going to ask you a little bit about the Miami Real Renal Institute. I know you have a great team over there on the You and Your Doctor show. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Hi, I'm Deanna Barron, RN, with All County Health Care. You know how I know that I've done a good job? We say goodbye. After you understand the medications you take, once you know that gaining two pounds in a day means you should call the doctor, when your wound is healed, when you can use your nebulizer all by yourself, when the goals that you and your all-county health care team of nurses, therapists, and aides established are met, we say goodbye. Very nice to meet you, and I hope I never see you again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. Hello, South Florida and beyond. I say beyond because we're heard globally. Uh, around the globe uh, with Facebook Live and iHeartRadio apps and right here in South Florida. We're here with Dr. Ali Nair, Miami Renal Institute. He's a nephrologist, so he specializes in kidney care. Uh, Miami Renal Institute, like I said, great website, drnayer.com. That's N-A-Y-E-R.com. You've got quite a team at the Miami Renal Institute. I was very surprised. I knew you are very... Um, prestigious physician, but the the amount of doctors that you have at the Renal Institute and their specialties is just amazing. Can you talk a little bit about your team? Sure, David. Um, you know, kidneys are very complex, complex organs, and once there is kidney problem, you have to approach it uh, from all different sides. Uh, we talked about nutrition, uh, the importance of nutrition in kidney health and overall health. So it would be important for my patients to see a nutritionist uh, who specializes in uh, patients with kidney disease so they get educated about what is good for them, what is bad for them. Just to give you an example, if somebody has chronic kidney disease or slow kidney function, meat would not be a great uh, thing for them because uh, meat somehow increases the pressure on top of the little filters in the kidneys. And if they're already working very hard and they're overworked and you increase the pressure on top of the filters, mm -hmm. they're going to go down sooner or later. So we then uh, advise them they need to follow a low-protein diet uh, to preserve kidney function so that the kidneys would last for them for a long time to come. 
uh, we have uh, social workers, and this is very I important. saw that. Yes, that's so great. This is uh, very important for people who unfortunately have advanced kidney uh, disease or kidney failure, and sooner or later would require dialysis. Dialysis is a very expensive procedure, um, and uh, so they need to be prepared for that. Uh, the government has provisions for dialysis patients if somebody has worked uh, enough uh, through his or her lifetime and has enough uh, credit they would automatically be eligible for Medicare so Medicare would pay for dialysis services but patients who have private insurance they do not need to leave private insurance to enroll in Medicare because sometimes private insurance offers more benefits to them once they have mm -hmm. kidney failure. So as you see, the economy of kidney failure is very complex and it goes beyond even a nephrologist like myself who has been in practice for 20 years, especially in the light of ever-changing policies and healthcare insurance situations and so on and so forth. Here in the U.S. Here in the U.S. Uh, so for that matter, having a so-called renal social worker, this is a social worker specialized um, in patients with kidney disease and insurances and Medicare and so on and so forth, it would be very important. Uh, so most of my patients would appreciate having a conversation with a social worker to learn more about their options. Um, we, have, um, we have also, we have been very fortunate to work with a, a renowned uh, kidney pathologist, Dr. Thomas, uh, who is at the University of Miami. Uh, he has been uh, examining kidney biopsies for many years, and he is a world expert. So I'm honored to work with him, and uh, the importance of this is that sometimes, a lot of times actually, we don't know exactly what's going on inside the kidneys. We see that the kidneys are failing, but we don't have a good explanation for it. So it would be very important to take a very tiny sample of the kidney using a small needle so, uh, so that we can examine it under the microscope to see what is going on, whether there's inflammation in the kidney, if there is inflammation, what type of inflammation, because this is going to tell us how to treat the kidney problem. Most definitely. And if done in expert hands, uh, we have uh, uh, saved a lot of kidneys over the past couple of decades. People who were like almost on dialysis, we have had patients who were on dialysis actually because, mm -hmm. of, because of an inflammatory kidney disease. We made the diagnosis, we put them on the right medications and they came off of dialysis. Wow. Uh, so uh, the importance of a kidney biopsy examining a a small sample of kidney tissue is uh, cannot be overstated and not for every it's not for everybody if somebody has for example high blood pressure for 30 years blood pressure is running 200 over 110 and there is no evidence on examination of urine that there is an inflammatory reaction in the kidneys we don't do kidney biopsies but again in selected cases it's very important to do a kidney biopsy is not only a life a kidney saver it could be a life saver because remember, sometimes kidney disease is a part of a global disease, a, an autoimmune process, for example. Mm -hmm. Young ladies in South Florida who have lupus uh, for one reason or another, they are at risk for kidney disease. And if you uh, diagnose a lupus on a kidney biopsy, uh, sometimes you can treat the kidney together with, uh, with the whole person uh, uh, at the same time. Uh, so it's important in some cases to have a kidney biopsy and examine it under the mm -hmm. microscope. Now we're here with Dr. Ali Nayer at Miami Renal Institute, drnayer.com. I wanted to ask you, where is the kidney located in the body? I think I have an idea, but... Very good question, actually. You know better than anyone else. Yes. Uh, well, let me just turn off my... Oh, that's fine. We have doctors on the show all the time. Right. You're a busy man. So, so that's for the ambient sound. So the kidneys are actually in the flank area, uh, right behind your uh, sides, uh -huh. toward the back. And uh, if there is an in inflammation in the kidney, sometimes patients report yeah. that they have flank pain. It could be one side or both sides, depending wow. whether one side is affected by an, by an uh, infection, for example, pyelonephritis, or whether there is uh, inf uh, involvement of both kidneys. Sometimes the pain can actually radiate toward uh, the front part of the belly into the groins, and this is a so-called kidney colic, 
uh, that patients, for example, with kidney stones would experience. The, as the stone is coming down uh, from the kidneys, go to, going to the bladder, causes a pain that will radiate from the planks into the groins. Uh, so that is another type of kidney pain that we sometimes see. Well, it's hard to believe we only have two minutes left, so let's go into the speed round. Right. Uh, is drinking cranberry juice really good for the kidneys? It's good for the kidneys. Any type of fluids in South Florida, especially in South Florida, because we are dealing with warm climate, hot climate, and dehydration. So the kidneys, like coffee filter, that needs to be washed constantly in order mm -hmm. to maintain its function. The kidneys needs to be constantly washed. So ample fluids are very important. Cranberry juice is especially important because it tends to uh, inhibit bacteria from sticking to the bladder wall, especially oh. in a young woman or middle-aged one who gets urinary tract infections. Mm -hmm. Cranberry would be useful because it can prevent infections, bladder infections. So it's the real deal. But Obvi go with the low sugar cranberry Yeah, juice. low sugar, of All course. Right. Obviously drink a lot of water, a little, South Florida. Important. Absolutely. Um, I know the music's playing, but we have just uh, under a minute. Does coffee consumption affect the kidneys? You obviously said if it's filtered, can be good, but don't add a lot of sugar and, and That's very true. to it as well. The thing with the coffee is it's a mild diuretic. Makes you pee, obviously. You uh -huh. drink coffee. And if you're dehydrated, you drink coffee, and you get more dehydrated because you go to the bathroom to urinate. Oh. That is not good. So that's why in Europe, they serve coffee with a glass of water. At okay. the same time. I actually already do that, so I'm, I'm good, good there. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nair, thank you so much for explaining so much about nephrology. We've got to have you on again on the You and Your Doctor show. I appreciate uh, that. It was a pleasure. Look forward to working with you. Check him out, drnayer.com, N-A-Y-E-R. Thank you, and good night, South Florida. Have a good night. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866-244-5422 and we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the